Hi there. I'm Nancy at Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. Sitting here in my yarn shop, we do a weekly podcast, or we try to make it weekly, and we hope that we offer information that helps you to become a better knitter, um, answer questions that you have, and show you what's up in the shop and the things that we're doing. Uh, first, I want to talk about what I'm wearing, and I, those of you who are watch me weekly will know that I've been working on this. This is called Weir, W-E-I-R. And um, it is just a nice v-neck sweater that um, our rep, Andra Asars, had, um, did she have it on or she brought it with her one day when she was um, visiting? And I just loved it. I thought it was so pretty. So. I, what I used, and I used what she did, sort of, I think I did a different mohair. But this is Wool Addict's um, footprints, and it's a combination of wool and cotton, I believe. And it's a fingering weight. Wait, I'll tell you exactly. I think it's wool, cotton, and polyamide. And it comes in 400 meter balls. So I combined that with Isayer silk mohair. Now, you, there are lots of mohairs. I think Andra did hers with um, a mohair called Ariel from Barocco that is multicolored. So it added even more to these colors. But I have this on today. It's a cold day, and it is so warm and cozy. And it's a very, very easy pattern. So I recommend this. It's a great knit. And it goes pretty quickly. I wanted to, um, there were some answers, questions, I'm going to give some answers, to um, people who had some questions on YouTube. And I invite you to um, ask us questions. Also ask us about, um, you know, what you'd like us to, want us to cover a technique or um, tell, a, tell, tell you something about knitting, of questions that you have. So I invite you to um, put those in the comments, and we will read them and try to answer them. Um, one question I saw the other day was, a person wanted to know, and this is apropos of this, because this is a pieced sweater. Um, there's the front and the back and sleeves. And I find I like that, because it's a good construction, and it really it makes it very wearable. Things don't stretch out as much when you have seams. So she wa this person wanted to know, is it necessary to use the mohair when you're seaming? So if you're holding mohair with something. And I would say, absolutely no, you don't have to use it. And in fact, you might enjoy not using it, because um, it's harder to take out if you've done a seam and you don't like it. Um, so yes, you can use um, the other yarn for seaming. Now one thing about seaming with the yarn you're knitting with is that um, you don't want to use a yarn that you can easily pull apart. Some of the woolen spun yarns, the ones that are a single ply, um, if you tug on them, they break. So that's not a good thing for seaming. So you can always use, particularly if you're doing mattress stitch, the seam disappears onto the inside and you don't see the um, yarn or thread, whatever you're using, to seam it. Um, so if you have one of those yarns that does pull apart, find another yarn in a similar color and um, use that for your seam. Um, <coughs> someone wanted um, to know when we show um, pieces that we've knit, they wanted us to tell what needle size we're using. And that's all well and good, but you're going to have to do a gauge and you're going to have to find your own needle size because we all knit differently. Some of us are tighter, looser, looser knitters than others. I used to be quite a tight knitter and I've loosened up a bit, but I very often will ha use a size larger than what is called for in the pattern. This um, sweater I used a size 7 and a 5 on the um, sleeves and the ribbing here. Um, but you may find that um, that doesn't work for you. You can't get gauge. So make sure. I had a question from someone, and it's, it's a good question. If I can't get gauge, do I just keep going down in needle size? Well, you can't just keep 
going down, you have to, if you get the gauge, or you're not close to the gauge, or if you don't, if you knit it and the gauge is good, but it's not, it's a nice fabric, I guess that's what I mean, but it's not the gauge that you want, then you're going to have to do some other kind of figuring out, because if you go down and keep going down and with your needle, you're going to get cardboard. And if you go up, it's going to be too loose. So if you get a fabric that is good for the yarn that you have, and you want to use that, then you're going to have to do calculations to do, don't change your needle, you're going to change the size that you do in the pattern. So, and that requires um, some calculating, and it's something, unless you really know what you're doing, you should come into the shop and we can help you do that. Now that's not a solution for everybody, but if you found a yarn that you truly love, and you really love the way it's, it's knit, we can help you figure that out. And I, I have to say, I do that all the time. I just change the size in the pattern, either up or down. So if, it's, if the fabric is too loose, what would I do? I would probably do a smaller size in the pattern. If it's too tight and the stitches are too small for the gauge, it's not the right gauge, I'm going to go up a size in the pattern. Or two, depends. But you have to do some good calculations to find that out. Somebody wanted to know what was the hat behind my, over my left shoulder. And it's not there right now, I think it's in the window. But I'm pretty sure it was Perky Little Hat and it was made in Rasta. Another one question we had, one day I was wearing a gray cardigan in cotton, and that was called Big Glove. I wanted to uh, make you aware of two hat workshops that are coming up. The amazing Catherine, who loves, loves to knit hats and to teach hat workshops, has two scheduled for January. One is called Bridewell, and you'll see a picture of that here. And it is two sessions for $85. First session is January 3rd. The second one is January 17th. And they are from 3.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon. And I believe it's on a Wednesday. So you can call the shop and register now. Or you can register online. Um, they're online. The second one is a, a hat called Between the Lines. And this has stripes, it has some color work, and it also um, will show you, she'll show you how to do jogless stripes. So if you've ever done stripes, when you come around to change to the next color, you can get this seam, it looks like a seam or something that's off kilter. So there are ways to deal with that so that you don't get it. Um, this hat is really cute. And the dates for that are January 21st, 4th, excuse me, 24th, and February 7th, again, 3.30 to 5.30, and that's $85. And you can also register online or call the shop. So I've been teaching a workshop um, call, ha called How to Make a Sweater That Fits, or Making a Sweater That Fits, I can't remember what we called it. And um, I am going to offer another one. Uh, I just haven't come up with the dates, because I know there was a big demand for that, and people I have to say, people say they've learned quite a lot. Um, and there's no reason to spend time, all the time that you do, making knitting a sweater and then have it not fit you. So there are solutions to that. And one of the reasons we knit is that we can customize and make things that are specifically for our bodies, body types. One thing that came up, um, we were doing measurements. And it's so important to have your own measurements or the measurements for um, your whoever you're knitting for. So one of them was the sleeve measurement. And we had w people in the workshop partnered up, and they each measured. And we had a, a schematic that you fill in that shows your me measurements. So in the second meeting, I had people go back and re-measure their arms. Well, lo and behold, they were different. And there's nothing worse. And I'm as guilty of this as anybody of making my sleeves too short. Because you know you get, you've heard the term sleeve island. You get on sleeve island and you just want 
that oh, you can make them too long, Robin's showing a sweater boot. I'd rather have my sleeves too long and roll them up than too short. And, um, oops, somebody's trying to get in. Somebody came to the door. Um, but one of the things that we found is that people's um, measurements, for the most part, were too short. So I thought, what's going on there? So we re-measured, and I, um, I, my last sweater that I made, not this one, but another one that I'm taking apart now because the sleeves are too short, and I don't know what the heck I was thinking. I think I was thinking of the measurement that I have from, from under my arm to where I like my sweater to drop, which is very different. So for me, this is generally 17 inches. And you also have to account for the fact that you're going like this too, which hikes this up a little bit. Um, especially if it's shorter, it really hikes it up. But you want to think about your armpit is right here, way in here. You're not going to measure from there because you don't want your seam, your sleeve, way up in your armpit. So you go about two inches, and then you measure down. And I would, depending on what you want, now you might want, if you're doing a summer sweater, you might want a three-quarter length sleeve, you might want a short sleeve. Um, but if you're doing now, we're all probably knitting winter sweaters. You want to come right down to your wrist. And you want to make sure you measure that well. Now, mine is 17 inches. And almost everybody in this class was around 17 inches. So I would be sure um, that you do that measurement, have somebody help you with it, and that you get it right. And I have to say this to people. You must try on your sweater as you're working. You can't just make this sweater a sweater and think it's going to fit you, even if you're, you know, doing measurements and stuff. You still need to try it on because you need to look at it, you know, move your arms around and see, do you have to re-knit something? Do you have, and you're much better off ripping it out and re-knitting it. I'm, in fact, enjoying re-knitting um, the sleeves that I, because I was, it was a yarn that I loved knitting on. So it wasn't a problem for me to take it out. And you're much better to take it out and have a sweater that fits you that you're going to want to wear. No sense in making a sweater and letting it sit in your closet. And that's what happens a lot of the time. So now we're getting right to the end of or near the holidays where you don't have a lot of time. There are a few things you could knit if you wanted. You know, if you're using Rasta or some big bulky yarn. You can do things, and we've shown you kits, things that can be, can be done in a weekend. Um, but if you're looking for gifts for a knitter, or um, you want your partner or spouse or whoever to get you a gift, we have some things in the shop. And we can put together a little gift box or bag for you if you wanted. We have these, um, and I think they're fun. They're color-coded stitch markers. So they're in different sizes, and um, it comes in a little kit. And some of them, oh, these are great, because some are the, are the um, ones that open and close. Some are just rings, and some are the ones that just have a, you can see, just, I forget the name of them. Just, um, you can slide that on or off, and then some other, um, things and uh, some other sizes. What's great about these is they have these little pouches so you can keep them all in there, keep them separate, and then they all go into this pouch. So you keep this in your knitting bag and you won't have to. And if you're organized and put things back, you won't have to go searching for, um, which is a little game I play with myself all the time. Very annoying. These are stitch markers from Coconuts, and these are just colored ring markers. Coconuts also has, and I love these, these are stitch stoppers, and they come in all sizes for the, the top of your needles, from size 0 to 15, four in each of six sizes, and they're made of, they're made of foam, and they go right, they slip on the end of your needle so it keeps your stitches from going anywhere. We also have from coconut, Coconuts back in the shop is our flight of stitch markers. So there are triangles, there's small circles, bigger circles. I think these are all, well, these are the split ring. That was the um, name I was thinking of. 
and triangles and small circles. So these are great, and this is a fantastic gift for someone because you can keep them all in here and keep them in your bag. So coconuts has great stuff. The other thing that we brought back into the shop is called the Maker's Keep. And this is a great thing that you can wear on your wrist, if I can ever open it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe Robin can work on that while I talk. Um, we also have in the shop um, measuring tapes, these great animal measuring tapes. And they're a lot of fun. Great stocking stuffer. These are sheep, my favorite things. And this is the sock monkey one. So they're very cute. Um, Robin can't get it open either. Yes. And um, also back in stock are, these are great if you're traveling, the um, scissors that open and close. Um, so these are great. You can carry them on the airplane. No one knows they're a scissor. Um, I love them. So and they come in this great little package. And the Maker's Keep is um, a thing you wear, can wear as a bracelet. And this is great if you're putting in stitch markers or if you're pinning something. This is magnetic. And you can just put all those things on so you don't have to go rooting. You can set yourself up. And as you go, you can just pick these off. You can put your um, tapestry needle on here, your scissors, anything that's metal will stick to this. So it's a great fun gadget if you want to get something fun for someone who has everything. They may not have one of these. The other thing that we have in the shop, and people have seen these, these are also stitch stoppers. And they're from a company called Fox and Pine. They have all kinds of, there's gingerbread men and owls, those of you who like owls, cups of coffee. Um, there's the gingerbread. And then we have these great little balls of yarn, strawberries. So there are lots of these. They go quickly. So if you're interested, um, I would get them or send your somebody in to get them. The other great thing we have for this time of year are um, the interchangeable sets. And these are from Chow Gu. These are the five inch, though they have five inch tips, and they go from size, US size two to eight, or 2.75 to five millimeter. And they're great, they're great sets. Um, and we have the four inch, I don't know if somebody was interested in the four inch ones. Oh, if I can open. Arthritis is not fun, folks. You lose the strength in your fingers. So this kit looks like this on the inside. It has the tips. It has the cables. And it has space for um, more tips if you want. These only go two to eight. Um, but you can also buy, I don't have them, but I think you can buy tips and cables separately. We also have, and I didn't bring them down, but we also have the shorty sets, which I think we've shown people before. And they have them in the, I think it's zero to three, and then three or four to eight, um, which are great for sleeves. And I was not, in the beginning when I start, tried using them, I was not a fan. Well, I've become a fan. And I think I knit this all on the, um, on the size seven. And it goes pretty quickly. And you just have to practice how you hold the tips. Now, they come in those shorty sets. They have a shorter tip and a longer tip. I prefer the longer tip. But if you're doing something really tiny, you probably want the short tip. So this is the other set, the 4-inch. This, is, this has um, 2 to 15. So this is a great set. Another thing we have, these I haven't taken them out of the bag, but they come in three. These are circular needle protectors. And you stick your needle, there's a, uh, this is a rubber tip with a slit in it. It's kind of like a cross, I think. And you stick your needles in there, and that keeps, um, 
keeps them, you know, um, first of all, from getting sat on. It protects them and um, from keeping, and it keeps your stitches on. So those are some ideas for um, holiday gift giving and buying. And we're now going to look at some of my favorite patterns. Well, just in case you are like me, I call myself Last Minute Lucy, um, and you like to do things at the last minute. We have a hat pattern, we have a sample here, of a hat called Wicker Brim Beanie. And it really, truly looks like wicker down here. But the beauty of this pattern is that you can make it in super bulky, bulky, light bulky, or worsted. So we have um, a Rios. We have a lot of Rios. We just got a shipment in. This is the worsted. These are, you can see the difference in the patterns. And here's our sample, which we have in Micha, which is a bulky, not a chunky, not a super bulky, but um, it's between a chunky and a bulky, I would say. But look how pretty this pattern is at the bottom. And Beth knit this, and she said it was a real quick knit. And then we also have lots of colors of Rasta. And you could do it if you really want to do a fast over the weekend or in a day, if you have time to sit down for a day you could make this in the rust. So, again, it's called Wicker Brim Beanie. And thank you, Beth, for doing that. Um, I wanted to show you um, some things that are going to come into the shop and some favorites of mine, because now we're getting beyond the quick knit stage and we can hunker down for the winter and do what I like to do, which is make sweaters. I don't have all sweaters here, but I have some favorites. I have one that we're um, going to have in the shop. It's called, it's a petite knit, and we love petite knit. It's called Celeste Sweater, and it's done in a um, light worsted DK. And um, we'll, this is not in color, but we'll have it up so you can see it. The other thing that I really love is a shawl that came out from uh, Natasha Hornby, and I love her patterns. Uh, she calls herself Moonstruck Knits, and this is called Artists, and it's a beautiful mosaic shawl knit in a sport weight, sport to DK, um, and it has beautiful, beautiful colors. So you'll see that um, in the shop in a week or so. So that's another one. This is um, a sweater that I knit called, oh gosh, am I going to say the wrong thing? Timber. Am I going to say the wrong thing? I better not. But I made this, and I loved, loved knitting it. And it's, I love the back. Yes, it's called Timber by Shannon Cook. And um, the detail on the back and the front, the only thing I would say to you, and this is a cautionary tale, of um, not reading my measurements or my gauge correctly. And mine came out, this has a wonderful schematic. So if you do it, I would recommend that you really pay attention. I'm going to redo this because I love this. This is the kind of thing you're just going to want to throw on every day around the house. Um, another one, so these I think a lot of these I knit during COVID. This is called Calliope and I love this sweater. And a lot of people have done it. It's um, five stitches to the inch. I think I combined a mohair with a DK or fingering. Um, you'd have to do a gauge, but I love that one. This one, we've had a couple samples in the shop. This is called Reese. And this is from, is it? No, Allison Green um, from Barocco. But it's a great little cardigan with a little bit of pattern. And it's a very simple chart, chart to read. So I liked that a lot. This one is a tried and true. If you want to make just a cozy shawl, easy, um, just you know, TV knitting, this is called Boneyard. And I've seen tons and tons of different versions of this. You could do, you could stripe it. 
Um, you could add a, some eyelets or something in there. It's another picture of it. And it's hundreds and hundreds of people, probably a thousand have done. Here's my, the sweater I'm wearing, Weir. These are just suggestions, things I like. This I did not personally knit, but I know a few people who haven't. This just looks great on. And this is called, well, what is it called? Stone Point. Um, so anyway, this is a fun poncho. Um, another one that I love and I love to wear, this is done in a chunky yarn. This is called Magnolia. It also comes in a, um, we made it in Micha, and I love to wear it. It's very fun. And it just has, you know, these cute baubles, just enough design to make it interesting. So I like that a lot. This one, Spectre, I wear this one a great deal. And I made this in, I did it like that in, a, in variegated, you know, from the top down. I think my very top one was white, and then it grew darker as it went down. Very fun pattern to make. And this one, this one I adore, it's called Tuileries by Julie Knits in Paris. And um, this too was a very fun, quick knit, because I was, I think I was on a size eight needle, I think. But it has all that, that nice detail of the ribbing going from the neck all the way down the arm. So that was fun. And this one you've probably seen in the shop. I think it's in the window right now. It's called Birkin by Caitlin Hunter. If you like color work, and just it's not a lot of color work, and it also has some little baubles on it. <coughs> now here's a sweater that she made um, three-quarter length. I don't know if I made mine that way, but again, you're knitting. You're the knitter, so you can make it long or short, however you want. But this was a lot of fun, and it's a really pretty floral pattern. This one is, um, next one is called Sides and Stripes. And it's a Vera Valmaki pattern. And it was in a fingering weight, I believe, with increases um, in the yoke. Um, but I did it in a fingering weight that I really like, so it's a really comfy knit. And then finally, I have something that's not a sweater, but something that I think is really beautiful. And you could make this, this is a I think this is for a baby blanket. It's called Umaro. And it does have a chart. I love charts. But I think it might be written out as well. Um, but this you could expand and make into a blanket. But I think it's cute for a baby blanket because it has all this texture. And babies like to feel things and stick their fingers in little holes. So this is a really, if you're looking for, and this is not, you know, a quick knit. This is a one you're going to concentrate on. But you'll love the finished project. And I love it just in white. You know, why not have a, a white blanket? So I think that's all I have to say for today. Um, I hope that everybody's having a great holiday season. And I hope we're now in the home stretch for those of you who celebrate Christmas, that you've got your Christmas shopping done, the tree is decorated. And Hanukkah, we're in the middle of Hanukkah, I think. Is that right, Robin? Last night tonight. The last night's tonight, we think. So it'll um, be over by the time. It'll be over, it. yeah. Um, but I hope everybody has a joyful time with friends and family and that you set aside some good time for knitting. I'm making a New Year's resolution before New Year's that I'm going to start to get up early earlier and knit in the morning, which is my favorite time to knit because I'm awake and not falling asleep over my needles. Anyway, happy holidays to everyone and we'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah.